Let's start off this class by reviewing the various types of long-term care facilities and the specific services they provide. First, let's look at the definition of a long-term care facility, abbreviated as LTCF. And these abbreviations, when you work in healthcare, are important. Um, LTCF facilities provide both medical and personal care. These uh, can cover providing medication on time, as well as injections, other medical services, as well as helping individuals with their ADL, known as or explained as activities of daily living. The activities of daily living are a very important measure of activities or things that people do every day that can be taken for granted, but an inability to be able to complete these on one's own is a significant identifier that this individual may need support and help. The six activities of daily living that we look at when determining if a patient needs long-term care or some kind of additional support include these six things. Being able to feed oneself, being able to bathe oneself, being able to dress and get undressed, and toileting, going to the bathroom by oneself, transferring, and this includes both walking and just like the ability to move oneself from a chair to a bed, for example, as well as continence, which is the ability to hold it in until one can get to a bathroom. Now, there are various types of facilities, and we are going to go over what they are and the differences that they have. A nursing home is usually identified as a SNF, okay, and that's S-N-F, which stands for Skilled Nursing Facility. And this is a facility with patients who not only have deficiencies in ADL, activities of living, but require around-the-clock nursing care. And this means from a registered nurse, not just an attendant or a caregiver. An assisted living facility is one that will attend to patients, provide housing and support systems, but mostly individuals go to live at an assisted living facility for assistance accomplishing their ADLs, their activities of daily living. And I know your slide says elderly individuals, but remember that there are people who are young and unable to perform activities of daily living. So this is not a requirement of age or age is not a criteria. Yes, elderly is the largest percentage of patients in all long-term facilities, but not the only one. So don't let that prejudice you. Continuing care retirement communities are fantastic because in one location, they have independent living for those who are perfectly capable of taking care of themselves and their activities of daily living, don't need support, but have on the same in the same community on the same grounds the same location also an assisted living facility and a skilled nursing facility this is very helpful especially for um couples because and I'll give you an example from my from my personal life is my parents moved into a continuing care retirement community and my father, after having surgery in the hospital, needed extra care. He could not go back to their independent living, their apartment, okay? So 
we got him a bed in the assisted living facility because he still needed a little bit of round the clock. And because it was in one location, my mother was able to sleep in her own bed in their apartment and just walk over to see my father every day. And this was very important for both of them. On the other hand, my aunt... Um, who was 92 at the time, fell and broke her hip. And she was living only in independent living, you know, an apartment complex, if you will, retirement complex, but an apartment complex where she had lived for 20 years. She fell and broke her hip and went to the hospital. And when she was discharged from the hospital, she needed to go to an assisted living facility. And the only, the closest one was about 15 miles from her apartment complex. Well, that was okay for her, except all of her friends, my uncle had already passed, and all of her friends were elderly in their 80s and 90s as well, and it became virtually impossible for them to come visit her. So here she is, 92 years old, recovering from hip surgery and a fracture, and she's then placed in a strange location, not knowing anyone and not having anyone able to come visit her. And depression and, and sadness increased and of course got in the way of her healing. So that is one of the wonderful things about continuing care is that your friends and your your uh, your uh, other people, your husband, your spouse can easily come visit you and it's important support. Okay, and that leads us perfectly to home care where the patient can stay at home live in their own apartment or their own house and have someone come in. This can be done in a live-in situation with somebody is there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Of course, it's usually shifts of individuals. And this helps people not only with activities of daily living, which might be a part-time thing, or it can be limited skilled care as well. Um, so if someone only needs some support, they might have someone come in in the morning, help them with their medication and getting bathed and dressed for the day. And then the, the support care goes away and doesn't come back until the evening where, again, they help them get undressed and bathed and into bed. Okay. Uh, so there's a great flexibility with home care as to exactly how much support the patient needs. Community services can be very helpful for those who have some function and but may need partial support, such as uh, you may have heard of Meals on Wheels programs, uh, senior centers for those who are living alone and want and need activity as well as friendship. There are support uh, transfer transportations to take um, seniors who live at home to the doctor or even to the grocery store. And then adult daycare is excellent for those who really cannot stay home by themselves, but live with a family member who may work. So they only need someone to take care of them during the day. And there are a lot of adult daycare programs now sprouting up. And then at the end of the road or toward the end of the road, we have hospice services. Now, there are hospice facilities where the patient would go and actually live in the hospice for the last six months. And then there are hospice in home care where the hospice caretaker comes into the patient's house or apartment Um the Medicare requirement for reimbursement for this is the patient must be expected to pass within six months, although, you know, that's not an exact science. And the purpose of hospice is um, on com comfort uh, and not curative. It, the idea is to help lessen pain and help them go gently into that good night. If you have any questions, and you may, and if you do, there are probably several other people who have questions, please ask your instructor.